Hi everyone and welcome to the Sky Enterprise webinar. Uh, this uh, webinar, uh, January 2020, uh, we're excited to have a look at a small data center use case. And uh, first of all, uh, I want to go through the agenda and do some introductions. Uh, so uh, uh, to introduce myself, my name is Martin Lomax and I lead the Sky Enterprise product team. And I'm joined today by Prafal. So Prafal. Hey, thanks, Martin. So my name is Prafal Lalchandani, and I'm Senior Director of Product Management for Data Center Solutions here at Juniper. Fantastic. Um, well, first of all, uh, we're going to go through some, some PowerPoint slides, and uh, uh, Prafal and myself are going to talk about the solution, and uh, we're going to talk about different components and uh, some of the decision points about where you might use Sky Enterprise or some of the other Juniper products uh, to manage your data center. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the topology and, and some of the uh, components that we're going to use in the system and then we're going to go into a live demonstration. So the webinar is going to run for about 30 to 40 minutes and we will have time for Q&A at the end. Uh, but also the team will be standing by uh, on the chat so if you do have any questions during the presentation and please uh, in the ON24 system there if you can just uh, put your questions in and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to those and, and answer some at the end as well. So please do stay online. Okay, and uh, just uh, starting off, I want to give a quick overview for those of you who aren't familiar with Sky Enterprise and uh, tell you about uh, what it is and, and some of the things that it does. So uh, some of you may have been previously familiar with uh, some of the use cases we've done around managing some of the uh, smaller Juniper devices in things like branch and campus environments. And that's really great stuff for uh, those environments where you need rapid deployment, uh, you need a cloud-based service to manage those, those infrastructure uh, devices. And it's really great because it is such a simple deployment. There's nothing to install, uh, there's no managing the management system. It's a really simple UI and it can get you going really, really quickly. It's really great for people who aren't that familiar with Junos, but also is great if you want to leverage the power of Junos. You can actually do both. You can actually use the Sky Enterprise Cloud Management System and also get in there and use all those advanced features that you love inside Junos. We've got the zero touch provisioning for the EX, SRX and NFX platforms it's really great to get your branch offices and your campus online really, really quickly. And for uh, people with Wi-Fi, we've got the integration there with Mist. So from Sky Enterprise, you can have that first level, the single pane of glass view of all of your infrastructure in one place. Now, I've mentioned some of the devices that we, we support. Uh, today, we're, we're mostly going to focus on QFX for this small data center use case. Uh, but we do support uh, the other Juniper devices as well. Now we are multi-tenanted, uh, natively multi-tenancy with uh, role-based access. This is great for those environments where you want to segment your network, uh, maybe you are providing managed services, or maybe you have different departments, uh, that can be a great solution to uh, break up uh, the infrastructure and have different types of users access it. Okay, so um, I'll be back in a little bit, but just want to hand over now to Prafal to talk about the solution. Thanks, Martin, again. So I would like to acknowledge that Juniper has uh, is leading with uh, two different management solutions for managing data center fabrics. Uh, Martin has already given a quick intro on Juniper Sky Enterprise, and that will be the focus of the session, but we also have Juniper Contrail for fabric management capabilities that is an alternative that uh, you can consider for managing your fabric, right? So in certain cases, the choice of I, either of these solutions may be black or white. In certain cases, it may be gray. Uh, but what I would like to do is to help the positioning of these both of these management solutions so that I can assist in a little bit, in a little way on uh, which platform is the right choice for you for your use case. Juniper Sky Enterprise it is targeted for small data centers. Uh, by small, I mean it, this could be just a single rack with a pair of switches to a mid-sized data center, which could be five to six racks and maybe 10 to 15 uh, switches. The advantage of Juniper Sky Enterprise is that for those small footprints, 
it's a very fast start getting into a cloud-based management solution. Um, it is really, uh, you do not have to manage the management platform with a, with a few clicks and a few minutes. You can start managing your QFX devices from the cloud and get started with very uh, simple fabric management capabilities around fabric provisioning or fabric monitoring and analytics and so on and so forth. Juniper Contrail, on the other hand, is an on-prem solution which is intended to for medium to large uh, data centers. And I would be uh, naive to suggest that the size of the data center is the only criteria for selecting one of these platforms. It's really more uh, more more than that. It's it's about your use cases and how sophisticated your ambitions or current requirements for those use cases are. So Contrail obviously does all of those fabric management capabilities uh, around uh, fabric provisioning and analytics and monitoring, but has more sophisticated capabilities that can help you uh, advance to other use cases. So moving on to the next slide. So this is a little bit of an assist on how you can screen uh, for Contrail or Sky Enterprise based on what your use case might be, right? So for example, if your use case is uh, is has any element of software-based overlays where the EVP and VXLAN overlays of or overlays of any sort are originating not just on the physical devices but are originating on compute uh, infrastructure, and or you have ambitions of expanding your data center uh, with Kubernetes or uh, you know Red Hat OpenShift for container networking and you're looking for a container networking interface, then, then that's a sophisticated use case where you need Contrail. Second, if you are trying to build a private cloud or an, an are in, in the lookout for an SDN controller that has integration with the workload orchestrators, whether that is OpenShift again or OpenStack or more predominantly in in the case of enterprise, it's, it's VMware, uh, then Contrail has those hooks into those workload orchestrators to build a private cloud and Contrail again is your, cho is your choice there. Uh, if you have multi-cloud ambitions where you want to expand your data center into a public cloud environment and then have a common operational and policy infrastructure for managing both private cloud and, and public cloud infrastructure, Contrail is your answer. And then finally, if you are looking at micro segmentation capabilities, especially uh, with software based overlays, uh, either currently or even in the future, then Contrail security is your answer. So Contrail will take you from fabric management capabilities to some of these more advanced use cases in the future. On the other hand, like I said, if you are a small deployment, five to 10 switches, and you know all you are looking for is a very quick way to get good fabric management and provisioning and analytics capabilities but do not have ambitions for other use cases then sky enterprise is a very compelling choice for you cool well um thanks prafal that's um it's great uh, really great to see there's there's different solutions and uh, different types of uh, of requirements and um, i'm really pleased to to see that we can help people get really quick time to value uh, with their qfx's so one thing I, I did want to touch on today was give a quick update on the types of devices that are supported in Sky Enterprise. Uh, as usual, we, we have support for the EX range, the SRX range, including VSRX. Uh, we've had QFX for a while and NFX. Uh, some updates that we've done recently is adding into the ordering guide is the ability to have the SRX 380, so a brand new platform. Uh, we do have the SRX uh, 320 with the Wi-Fi PIM and uh, related to today is we've added in the QFX 10K uh, into the, the 10K series into the ordering guide. Uh, so the QFX is always in the Group C licenses, so just bear that in mind uh, if you're putting a bill of materials together. So I just wanted to show a kind of an example here of, of a topology and talk through uh, some of the things that, that you might be thinking when putting this uh, small data center together. Uh, so uh, as Prafal said, you know, it's probably going to be a few devices. Uh, maybe you've got a slightly larger, uh, more capable uh, QFX uh, devices at the, uh, the core, uh, the spine of your data center, and then different types of devices at the edge of the data center in those top of rack or leaf roles there and these could be QFX 5Ks or EX series and we're going to look at aggregating those up to connect uh, with EVPN multi-homing um, ESI lag up into the uh, the core there. Uh, 
And in this example, we've also got the SRXs there for egress from our data center out to the internet, uh, or maybe connecting out to, to other, uh, other services uh, and other data centers. So where do we see these being used? Uh, we've actually got quite a number of uh, people already using QFXs uh, in the Sky Enterprise system and quite a broad range of, of different kind of customers we've seen using these. Uh, we have a, a number of the MSP or service provider use cases where we see people providing smaller or regional infrastructure that's maybe providing multi-tenancy to their customers and they use Sky Enterprise to help them simply manage, maybe it's their operations team, managing those QFXs in those small data centers. And then we have uh, retail and medical. And, and retail and medical are actually quite uh, similar in, in a lot of ways, where not only are they deploying the types of uh, services out into branch offices, uh, they're also making small data centers. Uh, and they've usually got just a few engineers who are managing these devices, and they love the simplicity with the templates I'm going to talk about to help them manage those data centers. And education, education, uh, they, they love putting the, the, the Juniper devices out there in the campuses and uh, managing those with Sky Enterprise. Uh, but as well, when they do build those uh, campus small aggregation data centers, uh, then they can use Sky Enterprise as well to manage the QFXs in those environments. So let's look at this cookbook of what we're going to do today with Sky Enterprise. So Sky Enterprise has a lot of those day-to-day -day management features for managing the infrastructure and health and reporting and all of the inventory side of your uh, devices. So what are we going to do today that's about managing the actual configuration of this fabric in your data center? Well, we're going to leverage uh, in Sky Enterprise, the feature is bulk updates or bulk update templates to help you uh, build some workflows and customize your golden configurations and regular changes. It's going to help you streamline the day-to-day -day moves, adds, and changes across adding things like a new top of rack switch or adding a VLAN, uh, changing a port, uh, whatever you need to do uh, to keep services running and, and get services uh, provisioned into your data center very, very quickly. So we're going to manage those QFXs from Sky Enterprise and we're going to leverage these templates. We have a selection of these templates that are in the Juniper Sky Enterprise GitHub repository and uh, we're going to leverage these in our bulk update templates feature and work through these uh, and show you live in the demonstration what's going on. So I'll uh, cut over now and, and uh, show you the demonstration. Okay. okay, so this is the lab that we have for our live demonstration today. This consists of two QFX 10Ks as our spine nodes, and they're connected together here at the top by the ET000 interface. And then we have a top of rack switch or a leaf switch here as our QFX 5K, and that is actually multi-homed with its uh, ET000 and ET001 interfaces up to each of the spine nodes. So from the, the Tor side, we're going to create an aggregated Ethernet interface. Um, and that's going to look just like any other Junos aggregated Ethernet interface. And we're going to provision that again with the template to make it really nice and simple. And then on the spine side, we're going to combine this AE1 interface across the two QFX 10K nodes using the templates to provide uh, the underlay infrastructure and then the aggregated ethernet on top of it uh, to be able to make that connection down to the leaf switch. So obviously here, this is a very, very simplified view of a topology and we're just showing one leaf node. Uh, in most situations, people would be deploying multiple leaves for redundancy uh, to have hosts multi-home into uh, two devices in the top of rack and maybe that could be uh, MC lag, uh, ESI lag or it could also be virtual chassis and that could be uh, multiple of those uh, connecting up into the spine for how many racks you've got. Uh, so just bear in mind this is a really simplified view uh, as we are going to go through 
the, uh, the, the workflow. Uh, we're going to talk about updating a, a single top of rack. That applies also if you were to, say, roll out a VLAN across all your top of racks. Uh, or when we do talk about adding a top of rack leaf node, um, maybe that would be adding a VC to the top of rack as well. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go to the demo now in the Sky Enterprise portal. And here we see our example customer. And first thing I'm going to do is look around and show some of the, uh, uh, the dashboard here. And we're going to go into devices and look at all of the existing devices. And we're going to add a new device. So first of all, I just click on add device. And in this pop-up window, I just put in the device name. So I'm going to add an SRX as a type firewall. And that's going to define that in Sky Enterprise. And here you see it's given me the configlet. So this is the configuration that I need to put on the device. I've got a SRX 300 here. Go into configuration mode. And see, I've just pasted in this configuration. Uh, this is the outbound SSH configuration that tells the device to call home to Juniper Sky Enterprise. Of course, this is adding a brownfield device. We could also use zero touch provisioning for SRX and EX and NFX, and uh, that would have it automatically connect without us needing to go and console or go into configuration mode. Okay, so that committed, and now I can go and look at the portal and, and check uh, that connection and, and wait for the device to call home and, and connect in using that secure channel uh, authenticate to Sky Enterprise. So I refresh that page again and let's have a look. Yep, there's the SRX 300-3 is online and I can see the types of actions that I could do here. So all the security related actions. Uh, here for a switch, we've got uh, interfaces, system and monitoring. Let's go and have a quick look at system and monitoring of a device here. We've got graphs of system, interface graphs, bandwidth usage. Uh, we've got uh, the system commits. So looking at a device, uh, all the changes that have been made. And we go and poll the device to, to collect some of this information. And uh, here we see there's a list of changes that were made uh, with Sky Enterprise and also via CLI. As well as pulling those from the device, we also have config backups in the cloud. And uh, here's the, the last five backups from this device. And uh, it's a great place to be able to uh, restore if there's an issue or uh, compare if you need to uh, compare two different configs that have changed. And we have a bunch of other useful tools like ping test, uh, RPM probes, packet captures, things like that. So uh, let's go and have a look back at uh, our devices list now. And uh, we see we have here a tenant, so I'll come back to that in a minute, tools, we have a IP Mac search, we have the uh, topology for our network, all the devices and their connections, uh, both uh, to other Sky Enterprise devices and external hosts. We have alarms for all the devices in our system, and we have integration with MIST Wi-Fi, so we can see our APs and clients. So let's go and have a look at tenants. So this is uh, multi-tenancy, and this could be organizations, uh, sub-organizations, or could be customers, uh, tenants. And um, here I've got a bunch of existing ones. Uh, we're gonna go into the small DC demo, and this clicking on this takes us inside the DC demo. We could have users specifically at this level, and uh, they could uh, just manage this infrastructure. As you can see, I've got uh, all the devices online and uh, existing uh, the, the three of our topology for this demo, uh, the two 10Ks and the one 5K. So first thing we're gonna do is add some tags. So I'm gonna click on the set tags button here and select the devices. Here I'm gonna select the two spines. Let's put DC, put spine as a kind of use case, and let's put location like West Coast. And as we see, that then has changed this. Now I've got all those tags assigned. Let's do our top of rack. We're gonna add in access or leaf, say. And uh, we're gonna say data center again. And also uh, let's do West Coast. And it's filled those existing tags for me. 
and I'm going to be able to use those later. So uh, we'll come back to those. Uh, great to be able to search for those tags. You can search on device name, site, or tag. And uh, that's uh, great to if you've got a long list of devices in there. Uh, here I've got some alarms. Uh, I've got the management interfaces and uh, uh, got some uh, uh, license alarms. So uh, if we want to remediate some of these, we do have some actions or, or uh, you could go and do some further investigation uh, if there's some power failure or something on one of your devices. So let's jump over to configuration. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to use the bulk update templates. Now I've loaded these in and uh, we'll come and look at the format of those in a minute. Uh, here they are on the GitHub uh, Juniper Sky Enterprise uh, repository here. Uh, there's a few examples of some other ones, but the ones we're interested in are the ESI lag ones. And uh, here just showing these variables inside our uh, the set commands. Now this can be in either set command format or it can be in Juno you know, Stanza config format. So it gives us a bit of flexibility there. Okay, so uh, we're going to uh, connect, first of all, these two spine devices together. So we're going to create a bulk update job, and that is going to uh, need us to put in our devices we want to manipulate. And we could do that individually, or we could say use a tag like spine and uh, maybe a, another tag. Now, uh, here I've put in two tags, and it's unfortunately brought in the leaf one because that was also in the west coast so just need to be careful uh, which ones i i add in uh, here we can see that the device is selected when i do select the advanced mode uh, which is the templates then it's going to give me the options to fill in all those variables and uh, we can see there is the option there for uh, variables on an individual device basis or we can display this in a nice table view uh, which I prefer, so you can then just put in all your uh, uh, variables all in one go. Uh, here I've got my little cheat sheet, uh, so I'm going to add in all of the BGP variables, all of the IP addressing and interface names. Um, so I'm putting in the uh, loopback address, the, uh, the local loopback, the remote loopback, what's going to be done for the BGP connections and uh, the, uh, uh, the interface name, um, and uh, I've just made a mistake there, uh, so let me redo those. And um, I would also need to put in um, the, uh, uh, the interface names, um, so this is going to do configuration uh, of all of the underlying requirements here uh, for both spine one and spine two. Um, because I'm using variables, it's going to put the right settings on each of the devices. Okay, so I filled out all the variables and I can click update. That's going to prompt me for these devices, so both my spines there, and then it's going to send that off to the Sky Enterprise system to do the update job. Now, I got uh, the response back, it was very quick, and uh, it's done both of them, and they were both successful and we can quickly check the report there, the log, see what happened. So now we've done the initial stage with the connecting the spines together. So we can now go and use another tool in Sky Enterprise, the Junos CLI. It gives us a direct CLI onto the device and uh, we can do some show commands. So let's do show LACP. Uh, well, it shows those interfaces that we're expecting, but uh, it shows them as uh, not yet uh, configured. So, uh, sorry, uh, it's detached, so uh, not yet working. So we need to move on to the next step, which is adding in the, uh, the tour. Um, so we're going to select this uh, uh, new template, which is adding the top of rack, uh, top of rack config. So this is all the settings that go on this top of rack leaf device. Uh, which basically enables the link aggregation, uh, the AE on the, on the leaf node. So now I've filled in the variables, we can send that job off, and uh, here we go, it's going to complete very quick again, and we can see now the configuration it's sent, as you can see, basic uh, the link aggregation config, and uh, now we can go back and check our spine and recheck that LACP 
see uh, if it's now connected. So again, we can use the Junos CLI feature here and run that show LACP interfaces. And now we see it's in distributing. So uh, LACP is active and our uh, uh, Tor device is now connected to our spines. So now we're going to move on and we're going to add the VLAN configuration to the spines. So again, I select my spine devices and select the template, the add new VLAN to spine config. Now, pretty simple here, just need the VLAN ID, the IRB IP and uh, the IRB virtual IP VIP. And uh, again, that's going to put all those variables into my template and give each node its unique configuration. So click to send that out. Again, now committed. Look at the different configuration that was sent to each node. Uh, we've got those two different IP addresses and the virtual one. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, go and uh, actually go back to configuration and we're going to do similarly for our leaf node here. So select that one again. Different template this time. This is add new VLAN to Tor config. Now we've only got one top of rack here and uh, it is a very simple config just to define the VLAN. This could be adding the same VLAN to all of our top of racks if we had 10, 20, 50, whatever top of rack uh, devices we wanted to add that VLAN to. And uh, we just, again, supply the, the VLAN ID and click the, uh, uh, the button to push that configuration out. And a uh, nice quick commit again, and we can see the config there. We just set that VLAN 111. So let's go back to devices and Let's jump back on the uh, CLI of our spine device here and let's look at the configuration that we sent. Uh, so this was our IP configuration on the, uh, the interface. So interface is IRB and we can see our addresses here. We've got the uh, um, different addresses and uh, uh, we can see also our eVPN database has all the information there being distributed for that. So uh, we will now go and uh, look at our uh, Leaf device and uh, we're going to uh, jump on the configuration here. The configuration we sent was just that VLAN ID. Uh, we didn't do any uh, layer 3 interface uh, on the Leaf. Uh, we can see our LACP is working and uh, we can go in and do some configuration. So why don't we manually set some configuration? Uh, and this shows how you can do things via bulk updates, you can do things via CLI and they just work together and uh, it, it uh, just works seamlessly with Sky Enterprise. So let's define a, uh, an IP address. Let's, let's put a uh, IRB IP address in and uh, we'll associate that with VLAN 111 and uh, commit that. Okay, so now that's committed, uh, let's check. We'll ping over to our, uh, our VIP and uh, we'll ping over to the, uh, the host there and uh, uh, let's even test that. Let's uh, test connectivity across the links. Let's telnet over to uh, one of those devices. Okay, so let's uh, exit out of here and go back to our devices. Um, now, we can have a look at the interfaces on this uh, leaf node. Uh, the top of rack switch here uh, doesn't have many interfaces in it. Uh, it just has a couple of uh, ports in use. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go back to a, another device up in our parent tenant, this example tenant, we go to devices, and uh, let's look at this EX switch, um, just to show you some examples. So let's dive over to interfaces, and uh, here we're getting the configuration and the interface status directly from the device, and we'll be able to go and look at our interfaces.
So the workflow here might be that uh, we have an engineer that wants to go and make a change to an interface. Maybe they want to set a VLAN to an access port and uh, they want to do that through a user interface. So we've got the, uh, the UI here. Maybe we go to G003 and uh, we want to uh, set it to a specific, uh, specific VLAN or uh, some other kind of configuration. So select the VLAN I want and uh, if I were to click that, it would uh, do the commit onto the device. Um, I've got some other options here. I can change this to a trunk port, uh, put native VLAN IDs on, and uh, uh, all those options are available depending on the capabilities of the platform and the Junos version. So now we've completed deploying our QFX devices. We've uh, connected them up on the spines using those very simple templates. We've added a top of rack switch. We've added some configuration across our fabric for the VLAN. Uh, we've shown how easy it is to combine that with adding in manual configuration changes, as well as simple changes like access port changes on the top of rack switches. So uh, a really great suite of tools uh, for really simple management and all those day-to-day -day tasks. Okay, so uh, back to the slides. And uh, from here, I guess the uh, thing that I'd really suggest is if you don't have any experience so far with Sky Enterprise and uh, haven't got an account, then uh, definitely please sign up for a trial account and uh, you'll be able to get in and uh, use, these, uh, use these features. Uh, look up those templates on the Juniper GitHub uh, repository there under the Sky Enterprise section. Uh, really great uh, growing number of tools there both for uh, these kind of use cases, uh, repetitive tasks and things that you can customize and also a lot of uh, zero touch provisioning templates in there as well. Okay, so uh, I've seen we've had quite a lot of questions come in and uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, there's been some answers there the, the team has been getting to as we've been going. And uh, I uh, also uh, will stay around uh, with the team to answer more questions uh, for a few more minutes in, in the chat box there. Um, please, uh, please reach out to your, your Juniper SE and uh, partners uh, if you have any questions on the solution and uh, would love to uh, show you more on the next webinar. Uh, we're running these every month. So uh, until next time, uh, look forward to your questions and thank you very much for your time.